I'm addicted and expensive. Byron Wilcox. And I'm watching WGS TV. Welcome to another installment of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com slash WrestleGaming. I'm Double B Billy Boudreaux, and this is going to be my Monday Night Raw review for the week of May 7th, 2012, which coincidentally is the birth date of the late great, a guy who should be in the Hall of Fame, but I think because of his wife, he'll never be there, Owen Hart. So, happy birthday to Owen Hart. Now, on to Monday Night Raw this week. Um, we open up with uh, John Laurinaitis coming out to cut a promo about, you know, his big match with uh, John Cena. In fact, now that he's going to start laying down the law, nobody can make fun of his voice and whatnot. And CM Punk came out and, uh, well, didn't make fun of his voice, but he called him things like, you know, he, that he's a big toolbox and, and this and that. Um, it was a good, uh, I want to say it's a good opening segment for, uh, for, uh, Laurenitis and CM Punk, it, it kind of gives us, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of a reasoning, you know, a little bit of a reason as to why Laurenitis, uh, why, why they're doing this storyline, a little bit of a backbone to the storyline with Laurenitis and Cena. So I'm going to go ahead and do, um, go the uh, opening segment with Laurenitis, CM Punk, three out of five. Next up, we had uh, an Intercontinental title match, a return match for a big show in Cody Rhodes. Um, it kind of went typically the way I thought it was going to go. Uh, Cody Rhodes was going to do anything he can to keep the title on him, you know, being the, the heel. So uh, Cody Rhodes took the count out the uh, loss to keep his title, and um, Eve comes out. Now, uh, before the match, Big Show kind of bumped into, uh, or Lauren Nice kind of bumped into the Big Show, and, uh, you know, Lauren Nice kind of yells him out uh, a little bit. Uh, excuse me. Damn good Coke Zero. But, um, and starts, you know, making fun of his voice. Eve hears it. So, uh, doesn't do anything yet. But then after the match come, uh, is over, Eve comes out and forces uh, Big Show to apologize for making fun of Laura Nice's voice. And uh, at first, he's not doing it. At, uh, you know, at first, you know, he was just joking around. And then Eve kind of reminds him that outside of the wrestling ring, there isn't much call for what she called a seven foot, four hundred and forty one pound freak. It kind of humiliated him. So, uh, very interesting to see where this goes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it a three out of five because it kind of went the, typically the way I thought it was going to go for uh, Big Show and Cody Rhodes. Um, I guess you probably just view Big Show as a a transitional intercontinental champion. You know. To you know, finally to do something with them, to, with Big Show and Cody Rhodes to kind of you know heat up the feud, you know have them exchange the title belt. Um, next up is uh, Dolph Ziggler and Kofi Kingston. Um, I thought it was really good. Um, I thought they were going to really put Kofi over on Dolph Ziggler, considering the fact they just put the tag titles on Kofi and our Truth last week. But then again, that's the tag titles. WWE's kind of on the tag titles right now, but still. Um, it was still an okay, decent, a very decent match. Uh, one thing I want to quote Stunly Man Ashley is, uh, normally we see uh, Ziggler coming out wearing his, uh, his shirt and his tights, kind of like a skirt. We didn't see that tonight. And, uh, and Ashley was, uh, I think, a little bit disappointed about that. But uh, anyway, the matchup was still okay. Um, I'm going to go 3.5 out of 5 for uh, Ziggler and Kingston. Um, next up, we had the interview with Michael Cole and John Cena, um, again, to get more into the storyline with Cena and Laurinaitis and what's going to happen at Over the Limit. You know, a lot of people were questioning, you know, why wasn't Laurinaitis reprimanded or fined by the board of directors? It's because the board of directors, we find out in this interview with Cena that uh, the board of directors actually contacted Cena and um, asked him, Cena asked him not to do anything to Laurinaitis until after Over the Limit, because that's when uh, Cena will get his hands on uh, Laurinaitis. And we also find out that uh, Cena's elbows have been, you know, he's, I'm pretty sure it's kayfabe, but um, that Cena's elbows having to be, uh, you know, because of the swelling, it's got to be drained like twice a day. I could only imagine it's, you know, somebody actually had to, has to go through with that, how much pain that would be. Then again, I've never had, you know, anything on me drained, so. That sounds wrong. 
Four out of five for the interview. I'm probably going to get a comment about that. <laughs> Next up, we have uh, Layla and Kelly Kelly taking on Max Maxine, who I've never seen before, but apparently from what I've been told, uh, she comes from NXT and the, her ring gear. She kind of looked like a dominatrix. You know, not not with the spikes and whatnot, but the leather leotard, I guess. And Natalia. Now, it wasn't much of a tag match, but then again, th these are the divas. But then Layla does have a monochrome of talent and the look. So uh, they pretty much pushed her over. And uh, one thing also um, needs to be noted on this match, Beth Phoenix was on commentary nursing her ankle injury. Um, one thing I want to, again, quote the Stully Man Ashley, what's with all the injuries? But um, it was typical diva stuff. Wasn't really impressed. Three out of five. Uh, next up, we had a uh, really good tag match. Um, Chris Jericho and Alberto Del Rio taking on Sheamus and Randy Orton. Uh, I thought it was a very entertaining match. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I was kind of questioning, you know, I was kind of thinking, you know, with the insertion of Jericho and Randy Orton into this, it's kind of, it, it, it would kind of play off two ways. It it would play off. It would play off the one way they could have started a feud with Randy Orton and Jericho, but they didn't go. They went the other route, which I thought they were going to go, and they decided to make the match. At first, it was just Sheamus and Del Rio for the World of Weight Title over the limit. It, it uh, quickly evolved into a fatal four-way. So it's Sheamus, Randy Orton, Chris Jericho, and Alberto Del Rio. So I, I thought. The purpose of this match was served well, uh, and very entertaining, and like I said, you know, it served its purpose. Four out of five. Uh, next up, we have Brodus Clay and The Miz. Something I really want to make mention on the fact, you know, in, in about all of Brodus, Brodus Clay's matches, Brodus Clay's matches, if I can turn, learn to talk right, we've seen Brodus Clay dominate about a good 90 to 95 percent of his matches. And what we what we saw tonight is the way that Brodus Clay can actually carry and handle himself when he's on the defensive. We've always seen him, you know, kind of leading the match in himself. You know, you know, beating the guys in like less than three minutes and whatnot. But what we saw is from the way it looked to me, it looked like the Miz was actually carrying the match in a sense. You know, it was. All about the Miz. The Miz was doing his best to help put over Brodus Clay as much as he could, and I'm pretty sure Brodus Clay was, you know, returning the feeling, you know, reciprocating the feeling. But um, it was a very different side of Brodus Clay, you know, to his matches. You know, again, we've always seen Brodus again being the strong, tough guy, and on this one, we actually saw him actually uh, on the defensive so we can actually see that side of Brodus Clay that he can actually wrestle like that as well um, so it was actually a very good entertaining uh, Brodus Clay match I was very interested I would and I was very intrigued and I must say I was impressed with both Brodus Clay and the Miz um, I'm not probably gonna get a comment or two about this but you know Miz was pushed a lot last year not anymore. Why? That could be a subject of a future video. You never know. But, um, anyway, as far as the uh, Bros Clay Miz match goes, again, yeah, very impressed. Four out of five. Um, next up we had on uh, this week's Monday Night Raw was, uh, you know, the update on Triple H's, uh, arm and elbow injury and then we had a legal representative of Lesnar, Brock Lesnar, come out and lo and behold, you know, this was the shocker of shockers. I did not anticipate this. So, big thumbs up to WWE for actually keeping this under wraps. Paul Heyman, Paul E. Dangerous, Paul Heyman comes out and says he's the legal representative of Brock Lesnar. Which I think is a really smart move to do. I don't know how WWE pulled it off. I, I don't know if maybe this is just a, you know, a one-off appearance for Paul Heyman, or if we're going to be seeing him in a, in a future, you know, down the road involved with the uh, Lesnar storyline. So, 
But uh, anyway, I thought it was a, a great segment. Uh, we find out that Lesnar, you know, in the statement, quit. Um, I'm pretty sure that's not really the case because of his contract. But I'm pretty sure it's just kayfabe storyline. But um, I'm, the way they played this out, it, they actually started to make this interesting. And it kind of played up to the belief of the, uh, the video I made uh, just a few days ago. Talk about a possible Triple H Brock Lesnar match, possibly at SummerSlam. So I'm going to go ahead and, and give Paul Heyman a uh, four out of five for his segment. Uh, really well done. Just like Eric Bischoff, Paul Heyman knows how to handle himself on the microphone and, and knows how to draw heat, and that's what he did. Uh, main event. It was originally scheduled to be uh, Lord Tensai and CM Punk and. Of course, uh, John Laurinaitis wanted to teach CM Punk a lesson. Makes it a handicap match. It's Lord Tensai and Daniel Bryan taking on CM Punk, and it kind of went the route I thought it was going to go. Uh, it was going to be like the domination of the handicap, uh, handicapped. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the, the tag team, you know, in the handicap match of Daniel Bryan and and uh, Lord Tensai. Again, it's just Albert repackaged. I don't know how many times I have to say it, but it's nothing new. Um, a couple of things, uh, uh, you know, one thing I really want to call out is, um, you know, the derailleur, you know, the double choke same to the power bomb. It was, um, it was kind of, you know, bosh up a little bit, it, it, but it was really hard to say who it was uh, at fault for the mess up of the move, you know, whether it was on CM Punk or, or Tensai, again, really hard to say, but it still doesn't take away the fact that you know, it was a main event match that kind of served its purpose and to uh, kind of build and start building into more and more hype for Daniel Bryan and CM Punk for the WWE Championship because after the match was over, Daniel Bryan uh, assaulted uh, CM Punk with the YES! YES! Lock. Uh, I'm probably going to get a comment about that. Anyway, <laughs> but it, it was still an okay uh, main event. Um, it, it could have went on a little longer. They could have put a little bit more hype into it, you know, even though it was just announced uh, earlier in the night. But it just didn't have a, you know, even though it was a good match, it just didn't have that main event feeling to me. So that's why I'm not going to give, uh, give it anything higher than a four out of five. So uh, what I want to know now from you, the WGS TV viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on Monday Night Raw this week. You know the two ways to do it. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below or in a video response. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say on Monday Night Raw this week. Don't forget if you have any questions you would like to ask me and have me answer in a video for you guys, be sure you check out my Formspring account, formspring.me slash the wrestle gamer. And also don't forget to like and favorite this video. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to youtube.com slash wrestle gamer. So with that being said, I'm Double B Billy Goudreau saying thank you very much for watching.